In today's fast-paced business world, time is of the essence. And more companies and executives are capitalizing on spending less of it connecting across operational networks. Globally, the private aviation industry experienced a boom spurred by the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, transforming a once niche industry into an overnight sensation. But while the popularity of this offering has now surpassed pre-pandemic levels, key players in the Nigerian market say there are still some existing knowledge gaps within the market. In, uh, in Africa today, we have a total of about 474 VIP aircraft, of which Nigeria has 100. South Africa is about 170. If you compare that to the United States, where there are 25,000 VIP aircraft travel uh, operating, Europe has about 4,100, Australia has about 700. Those are the numbers, and um, Africa only represents about 2% of worldwide VIP aircraft uh, travel. So it's not that uh, there aren't enough people that can afford, but it's because there's not enough information out there in the public to make them realize how turnkey this product is. From the time that they can arrive in the comfort of their um, vehicles, decide when they want to travel, how they want to travel, through where they want to travel. So um, that's still to be tapped. The Quits Aviation Terminal in Lagos provides an ecosystem for VIP aircraft travel, a fixed base operation service, a maintenance and repair facility, as well as a stable for charter operators. This ecosystem that is here really caters for um, organizations that have their own corporate aircraft, uh, high net individuals that own their own aircraft, and of course uh, <clears throat> uh, business individuals out there that would want to charter for uh, space on an aircraft that uh, would be leaving from here. The charter service has enjoyed as much popularity and operators like Anapjets have an offer a fractional ownership option for its clientele, but not without a clear sensitization of its fleet's performance. There are many people who initially felt that they had to own their own jets and are realizing they do not have to do that. Um, they know the certain number of hours they want to fly and realize that now that there's an offering that allows them to fly just that amount of time. Although at the same time, many people, once they do buy a fraction, they end up realizing that they actually want to fly more. So some people buy one fraction and buy another. But the great thing about it is you can tailor it to your needs rather than just having an aircraft, having to sort out all the maintenance, the crewing, you know, the fueling, catering, everything. You realize that we can take care of that for you. A lot of people are still in the belief that, uh, that the bigger aircraft, the aircraft they're in, the safer it is. Even if they'd rather take an old banger that's 20 years old than a Finom 300, our newest, our newest one, which is a 2022 aircraft. So that's something that we're constantly having to educate our clients about. This is one of the aircrafts Atawari refers to. The Embraer Finom 300E seven-seater which can get you directly from Lagos to Dakar within three hours, 45 minutes. With an existing fragmented infrastructure network for intra-Africa travel, this is easily an appealing offering. Another main feature of this aircraft is it only requires a short takeoff and landing distance, which means you can fly to certain airports that larger aircraft can't fly to. You can fly directly to places like Principe, whereas normally you'd have to fly to Sao Tome and then take a smaller aircraft from there to Principe. You can fly directly from Lagos to Principe in an hour, 15 minutes. Uh, you can also fly to private airfields in Nigeria that, um, that commercial aircraft can't get to. Accessibility to certain cross-country hinterlands is an entirely different proposition and a glaring market opportunity for the helicopter business space as a premium is attached to this service. You can ask a private jet to take you to Oweri. 
But that private jet will not be able to take you to Abba, will not be able to take you to Arundi Zogu. But we can do that. So we can take off from here direct and go to Arundi Zogu. We can take off direct and go to Busau. We can take off to we and go to where the private jet cannot go to. We still have very comfortable air conditioned helicopters. So you still get that service that you will ordinarily get uh, in, uh, in an aeroplane. Probably only maybe not uh, having an air hostel, but you have to do <laughs> what you have to do. So we we kind of, the way we overlap is that they can go to an airport and we can take you from that airport and take you to the hinterland where you do not ordinarily have an airport or where you do not have easy infrastructure that will take you to where you are going to. Cavagen Helicopters specializes in air logistics support services with most of its clientele in Nigeria's oil and gas industry, medivac services, and VIP transport market. As quality and safety is a major tenet of this offering, the facility boasts the first and only state-of-the-art AW139 flight simulator, which provides a fully immersive virtual environment representing operational locations. Pilots can also learn to handle an array of system failures and malfunctions should they arise. Amid a rise in market appetite, operators within the industry face some key challenges, especially new entrants such as Briar Okonkwo, who runs a full-service premium booking platform for private aviation and luxury concierge services. Being a new entrant, it's really um, good understanding the market and understanding how um, we can bridge the gap between um, what we have right now currently in Africa and in Europe. Um, generally across um, Africa, business aviation is still very much in its infancy and so um, in compar comparison with what we have with our counterparts in Europe and America, you know, we still have a long way to go. I think the greatest challenge we face in the industry as a whole are the brokers. Um, one, because we do not have um, a unified platform where people can go and literally just book for any jet of their choice. People um, rely predominantly on the network they have and the brokers kind of pad up the prices on um, the fares. That is the greatest issue we have in the industry. Um, I also think we've been able to mitigate that as a business by having the technology platform where you can just go and book yourself. The prices are fair and you can pay on the app and make sure you know, and we ensure that um, the jet is ready and waiting for you. Players and stakeholders are not exempt from more bottlenecks. The challenge is posed today is that uh, after we went into COVID, uh, the number of aircraft that were available for VIP travel reduced because COVID imposed the requirement for people to fly in less confined spaces, right? As opposed to commercial. So the demand for VIP travel rose extremely. And so today the uh, manufacturers are sitting with a situation where the demand for VIP aircraft is very high. So the prices have escalated. So that's one bottleneck. So uh, finding aircraft that are um, available in the market is difficult today. So prices are high. Um, because of COVID, a lot of the um, aircraft component manufacturers have gone under. So as a result of that, the market is seeing a huge problem with uh, spare parts availability. So that is uh, having um, um, an impact on aircraft airworthiness, on aircraft serviceability. So we are seeing more and more aircraft that are having to be grounded due to lack of spare parts. Another highlighted bottleneck is around operating and purchasing regulatory restrictions, as many VIP aircraft owner operators appear to have some acquisition knowledge gaps, while access to Forex is yet another. All our parts 
all our uh, major items we use are actually sourced from abroad, from Europe, from America. So we have to pay foreign exchange. And it's a lot of a challenge. You know how the Naira is galloping now? We do, we do not get it at the official rate, so we always have to go to patronize the parallel market. It's not easy on us. So we would like if there's anything, uh, probably the government will do to address those issues. And another issue is the custom clearance because we offer that the Spock services and uh, we would really like if uh, we can get some help, uh, you know, in terms of addressing that zero duty that is meant to be in the Nigerian finance regulation applied across but to all the operators that will go a long way in helping us and it's also lowering the cost as we can see people are all uh, suffering now because of the amount of we pay on tickets because of the rising hike of uh, Jet A1 so if we can get any support from the federal government that will really be welcome and appreciated. Maintenance is a core prerequisite for operational and reputational longevity in this industry, a service that both Quits Aviation and Caverton Helicopters have in place. So this is an entire overhaul of the fuselage. How long does this take in relation to other parts of the plane? So, so this check in particular would take at least three to four months. Um, if we had the engines and landing gear available on site, but um, uh, in an organization like ours, we have to subcontract the work, so it takes a little bit longer than that. This is a work pack for the detailed inspection on the aircraft, so it's, it encompasses everything that needs to be done on the aircraft as per the 12 months check and other camp tax that are due. So, this is a uh, sequences worksheet. worksheet and the sequences sequences as per sequence one two three four it entails what the inspection is all about so, so the, these are all the necessary processes to, to in to order through, of sequence yes, in order of sequences environmental and sustainability issues have been at the forefront of the industry's discourse in europe alone CO2 emissions from private jets increased by 31% between 2005 and 2019, outpacing the growth in commercial jet emissions, and industry executives say that sustainability is becoming a key priority for their businesses. Embraer, for instance, had made a pledge to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2040, while VistaJet aims for the same by 2050. The main problem of uh, jet operators is uh, that most of people, they fly in one way and then you need to return the plane, empty plane. So you pay double for fuel uh, and it's absolutely inefficient. So the successful model of operating of uh, jets is uh, not to return them back. I'll give you just an example. One of them you should put in the north somewhere like Malta, where you, you have proper service for them. Some, another jet you should base on, uh, let's say, Canary Island. But one more you can place in Lagos or Abuja. One more in Cape Town. One more in, uh, let's say, Zanzibar. And then uh, you cover the whole map. It doesn't matter where you get your request. You have a plane nearby to avoid a useless usage of fuel. For a more turnkey business approach to its offerings, hospitality is another sub-product the industry is developing. Just like Queen's Aviation's hotel facility, positioned right in the middle of the VIP aircraft terminal for the ease of travelers and crew members. Probably the only hotel in the world, I'm not aware of any other one that has its own in-house immigration and customs desk. So this is very unique uh, about this uh, property. And then we have uh, boutique rooms. Our rooms are 42 square meters. So they are actually outsized uh, rooms. And we have two presidential uh, suites and with a uh, very stunning uh, view of the airfield. Eating facilities, boardrooms and the uh, uh, meeting capacity of about 120 uh, persons. As it continues to grow and expand its networks, Nigeria's private aviation space promises to keep pushing the envelope and reaching newer industry altitudes. 
Abby Olawi for Raj News.